When I was really young, about age 11, I went to a church camp. And it's like one of those summer camps that you go to, but you have church services at the end. And so for the first time, I was told that I was going to be a minister, that I was going to play some role in the church, and I was going to influence people and, and bring them to God. Then at age 15, there was a traveling prophetess. This is someone who like hears from God, and then they tell you what God is saying to them. And then you're supposed to kind of do what they tell you to do, take the steps that they give you, and kind of give you a path. And then at age 18, there was a group that was traveling around, and they ended up coming to my church. And it was confirmed again, that's what I was supposed to do with my life. I was supposed to be a minister. That's what I was born for. That's what God created me for. He created me to be someone who read the Bible all the time, who prayed and fasted and listened to him. And then I would go in front of a group of people and I would tell them what God was telling me. So at age 18, I went to Bible school. I went to a group called Master's Commission, and they were a group that was affiliated with my church. I would compare it to a Mormon's mission. You would spend time traveling around the world or to different cities in the country, and you would spread the good news about Jesus. You would tell them that there's hope for you. There's a better life. There's a better way. All you have to do is give everything to Jesus, give your life to Jesus. You have to come to him and tell him that you're a sinner and that you will accept him into your heart. And then you have to be baptized in the water and that you were going to be a new person. I believed this my entire life. I believed with every single piece of me, with every single fiber in my being, that there was a God and that this God put me on this earth to do that. Now, furthermore, I believed in something called Pentecostalism. Now, this is a branch of Christianity that deals with mm, believing in the modern day manifestations of the Holy Spirit. So I believed in speaking in tongues, interpretations of tongues, casting out demons, laying my hands on the sick and having them healed. I believe that God used me as a vessel and that I had the ability to do those things as long as I remained pure and holy. So I devoted my entire life to that. I believed that until I was 27 years old. Let's talk about why. There was a guy named Ted Haggard. He was a minister over a large church. He had several satellite churches all over the world. And he, he spoke with great authority about all things that were related to God, about what God wanted for the church, what God wanted for our lives, how we should behave, how we should conduct ourselves in public, and how we should spread the message of God. Well, he was doing a series about homosexuality, living the gay lifestyle. A three-part series, I think. And at one of those church services, a guy came forward and he talked about how Ted had come to him for massages and they had done drugs together and that they had committed sexual acts together. Basically, he outed him in front of thousands and thousands of people. It was very embarrassing for him. He had to step down from the church. There were lots of things that took place. His family went through a really hard time. His church kind of fell apart. There was a lot of chaos and there was a great mm, exodus, right, from, from the faith. And I thought that at the time, I believed I was going in that direction. I had begun to travel around Texas and do music at different churches. And I saw myself moving in a direction where I was going to be a part of a very large church. I was going to get married to a woman. I was going to have kids. And we were going to have this great life together, serving God and, and bringing people to Christ. And, and that was going to be my life. That would have been a very easy life for me to live. 
I was very good at doing that. I was very good at leading worship. I was very good at reading the Bible and teaching concepts from it. That was my job. That's what I was supposed to do. I'd spent many years of my life perfecting that. Now let's talk about when I knew I was gay. I knew I was gay when I was six years old. I remember asking my mom for an easy bake oven. And I thought about making brownies and food and, and having my husband come home and, and me, you know, kissing him and cuddling together. Those were just my natural thoughts. I never had a thought like that about a woman. And I remember thinking all throughout my childhood that was a normal way to think. And it wasn't until junior high that you begin to get around other guys who are going through puberty. And at that time, it's all about, oh, hey, man, did you see that girl? Did you see her boob? Did you see that, that magazine or that video? This was the 90s, keep in mind. So magazines were like the thing, you know, um, VHS. <laughs> VHS was the thing. And so did you see that video? Did you share that cassette with your friend? You know, this, that, that was the time back then. And I remember thinking to myself, well, no, I, I haven't wanted to look at uh, a girl's boobs, but I have wanted to look at your pecs. <laughs> and I wouldn't mind seeing uh, you naked. <laughs> but you wouldn't, of course, tell them that because that was socially unacceptable. And so that's when I learned that being gay was taboo. I learned that it wasn't acceptable to like guys. And of course, understanding the kind of species that we are, we're, we're a part of tribes and, and we kind of come together as groups and, and we want to be a part of something. So I fell in line with that out of fear. Right. You, you don't want to be cast out of the group. You want to be kept in the group. So I would fake it. I would talk about, oh, yeah, I saw those girls boobs and, you know, just made up all of those things. And of course, at the time I was I was involved in the church and, and there were those things happening as well. So I suppressed all of those feelings and those desires and I prayed and I prayed. And I prayed and I prayed and I fasted and I cried out to God to change me. And I begged him over and over and over again to take these evil desires out of me, to take these things that I couldn't explain and I couldn't understand and I couldn't quiet figure out where they came from. And I asked him over and over and over again, God, please take this from me. One time I fasted for 10 days. I didn't eat food for 10 days. And that was because I wanted God to deliver me from same-sex attraction. How sad is that? How sad to not eat food in desperation for a God to change you. I went on all these missions trips. I I cried out to God. You know, when I talk about prayer, I'm not talking about the God is good, God is great, let us thank him for the chicken kind of prayer. You know, I'm talking about on your face at the altar of a church for hours praying. That's the kind of prayer that I'm talking about. I'm talking about I play piano, played since I was four years old, going up and playing piano and just playing music to God and, and, and loving on him and worshiping him and just trying to find some type of solace uh, in him and find the grace to continue on in him. I tried. I tried for years and years and years. And then I finally just gave up. Ted Haggard happened. I saw myself going in that direction. And my line of thinking was, you know, I'm going to go in that direction. I'm going to become this, this really big member or, or big leader of the church. And I'm going to end up marrying this woman and having all these kids and being this great shining example of what it means to be a man of God. 
and I'm going to end up going to some man to give me a, a massage anyway. And I'm going to be brought out and, and chastised before the whole world. And I just decided at that moment that I'm not going to do that. I'm going to come out. And I'm going to live my life. Now, there's a whole series of things that happened for me in order to feel comfortable enough for that to happen. We, when you're growing up in a small town, I grew up in a, a very small town, Lano, Texas, population 3,000 people. You know, when you're growing up in a small town and you hear about the gays, they would call them the homosexuals, the faggots. Ugh, what a gross word. Um, it was always synonymous with a child molester. Basically, being gay was like right below being a murderer, even with being a child molester and a little above, like on, on the scale of, I'm sorry, on the scale of sin, right? It was right above being an adulterer. So there were like levels of gays, you know, or like levels of sin. And so being gay was, if you were gay, then you were automatically a child molester. So the fear was there. The fear of me coming out while I had siblings that were still in school, and one was in high school and one was in junior high. And I, I was very afraid that they were going to be made fun of for having an older gay brother. I was afraid of parents coming up to me who, I was also a youth minister, and having them come up to me and, and accuse me of molesting their child. Those fears are very real. And clearly those are ridiculous concepts and notions now. We know so much more. But understand that at the time, that's what I was afraid of. Coming out as gay meant that I had to accept I was going to burn in hell for eternity. That I was going to be separated from a loving God. And that I was going to be put into a place where I would never feel love again. And I would burn like on fire for eternity, and I would be tortured by demons for eternity. Those were very real concepts to me, and they were very real things that I believed until I was 27 years old. I truly believed that at any moment there was going to be a rapture, and we were going to be sucked off this planet up into the sky, and we were going to meet Jesus in the air, and then we were going to reign with him for a thousand years. Everything I did had to do with going out and reaching the lost and trying to bring them to this understanding that I had since I was a child. My entire purpose in life was to go out into the world and tell other people that they were sinners <laughs> and that they needed God. Oh, it's, it's sad. It's, it's sad when you look back at it because I had no understanding of anything at the time. It wasn't until I came out at age 27. I really began to come out when I was 26, but I didn't officially come out until I was about 27 to my family and all of my friends. And it wasn't until I came out that I really began to understand how beautiful humanity really is. I began to understand that all the things that I had been taught my entire life were just flat out wrong. That gay people weren't bad. Definitely not all child molesters, right? Not all gay people are child molesters. That there was a lot of beauty in the gay community. I learned how to accept myself. I learned that I had deep internalized homophobia that I had to deal with. I went through years of counseling, years of therapy to work through those issues. And it was really, really hard. It was really hard to come to terms with the fact that everything I had been taught in life was just wrong. And that I had been raised in a bubble my entire life. It, it, the only way I can describe it is I felt like I had been raised in a cult. And I was in many ways. I was about two steps from actually being a part of a, a very real Jonestown kind of cult. And it was just very, 
it was jarring to my psyche and it was destabilizing to my overall well-being. And it took years and years and years for me to come to terms with that. I've been out for 10 years now. I'm happier than I've ever been in my life. I'm pursuing a career in medicine. I'm transferring into a university. I'm actually moving to another state pretty soon into Portland, Oregon. Woo! And transferring there to finish up my last year and a half in biochemistry degree. And then I'm applying into medical schools. I love medicine. I love biology. I love understanding how things work because we actually can understand how they work. And I can go into a lot of videos and, and maybe I will make several videos in the future talking about this, talking about how that happened. How it was that I went from believing in speaking in tongues and casting out demons to now believing in rationality. In fact, what I would say I believe in today is really simple. It's rationality intertwined with love. What is rational? What are the things that we can prove through evidence? I went from something where I believed in faith. Faith, according to the Bible, is the belief in something without evidence of it. Believing in something without evidence. To me, that seems now like a completely opposite way of thinking. Now, the only way I would believe in something is if there was evidence for it. So understanding how that dynamic switched and changed and how I came out as a sane person, at least I think I'm sane, but how I came out as somewhat normal, it's just a miracle. It's a miracle. Um, not in a Christian way, not in a God way, but in a figurative way. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be gay. I love being gay. I love that I love men. Men are beautiful. <laughs> men are absolutely beautiful. I have met the most beautiful people in my life in the gay community. The most loving and accepting and kind people in my life I have met in the gay community. My whole life I thought that the church was a place of love and that the church was a place of acceptance. But it wasn't. It wasn't for me. But you know where it is a place of acceptance and where there is a place of love? In the gay community. The rainbow flag behind me there, what it represents is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's been an incredible experience to live in a time where I don't have to be afraid of holding the hand of a man that I love or a guy that I'm dating and walking down a street together. I don't have to be afraid of being tied up to a car and drug, having my flesh being ripped from my body. That sounds graphic and maybe it is for some people, but understand that at one time, that's what people were having done to them. We stand on the shoulders of giants, of people who have gone before us, who have made a way for us to be here. And it is beautiful. What an amazing time to live in, guys. Just think about that for a minute. What an amazing time to live in, where love is love, where I can accept you for exactly who you are. As long as you obey the laws of the land, you're not taking advantage of a minor, you know, you're not doing whatever the thing is that you shouldn't be doing. I'm going to love you exactly where you are, and you can love me exactly where I am. I'm proud to be gay. I'm not ashamed of it. I am not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed and I am not afraid. And you can get there too. This video is mainly just to let people know, if you come from the background that I come from, there is a way out. And there is a path that leads to a better life. And you don't have to continue down the path that you're in right now. 
I want you to know that you're not alone and that what you're experiencing and what you're feeling, those are very real things and they're not evil. They're not bad. You're experiencing what it is to be a human. And how can love ever be bad? How can love ever be evil? Love between two consenting people, whether they are two females, two males, a male or a female, whatever gender you want to associate with, whatever non-gender, non-binary that you want to associate with, love between two consenting individuals, adults, is beautiful. And I am grateful to be a part of this time and in that understanding, flying on this spinning dirt rock, you know, in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy. It's just, it's just beautiful. So I want to give you that encouragement. Ask me some questions down in the comments. This is the first video that I've ever made for YouTube, but I want to be open and I want to talk about things because this is the time. This is the time to do it. Ask me any question you want. And if it's, if it's within the, you know, the, um, the range of what is uh, possible to talk about on YouTube, then I will talk about it. And I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have a great day.